what's going on guys uh i'm a little bit sick right now and i haven't made a video and i don't know how long i'm saving the rest of my turkey hunting videos for next year before turkey season gets here kind of hyping everybody up but um i just wanted to take a second to talk about like last year i went through like a stump usually success graphs go from like flat and then once you start getting good at something or whatever they go straight up it's usually how success graphs always work however whenever it came to shooting my traditional bow it went like this and then it went up and it just flattened out i never shot back up this year i've been doing a lot of work on my shooting and you know you can judge me because i made a i didn't make two best of a shot on an eight pointer that i killed last year with my uh longbow i got the skull in over here with the arrow but you could judge me for that but i got worked up i let buck fever get a hold of me on that one because it was the first deer I ever shot with a longbow and it's the first buck i've ever killed with a bow too so it kind of uh hit me all at once but what i've got here is a uh old bear polar recurve uh and I throw my quiver and stuff on it. And I'm going to try to kill one with this. This is my Pawpaw's old bow. So uh, I really would like to kill one with it. It would be nice. Mostly I'm going to do my talking in here. Because it's, it's been 95 degrees. And about 90% humidity for the last three days. And that's why I think I got sick. Is because it got dark and I got cold. Because I was watering. Uh, working a golf course. So. We had the water green since it's so hot. It's not raining. It's been awful. Uh, but, nonetheless, I'm making another video, which is good, because I haven't made one in forever. Back to what I was saying. To get better with my recurve and my traditional bows, I had to go through what I like to call a reset. Whenever it's the same thing as if you play any kind of sports, anything that involves to do with some kind of form, you know, from baseball with batting form, basketball with shooting form, uh, I mean, golf with golf form, because I just recently started playing golf, because I don't work at a golf course, you get to play for free. But I done what I like to call a reset. And by reset, I mean completely reset my form. I took my bow, I walked outside, and I shot every day trying to figure out what was wrong. I would go out and shoot one arrow at a time. I'd just bring one arrow with me, shoot one arrow at a time so that I know I could focus on that one arrow. And as soon as I shot, I would give myself time to break down what I'd done. And now what I found was for years, I've had a really 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 tough time with dealing with target panic it's followed me everywhere uh, whenever I was about like 10 to 14 years old when I would shoot a deer with a rifle I couldn't with a muzzleloader or a rifle I would jerk the trigger so bad I couldn't hit the broad side of a bar now on the second shot I could but the first shot I don't know how many deer I missed and they winded up giving me a second shot that I killed uh, but I got out of that. I had to teach myself how to reshoot a rifle, which wasn't very fun. Uh, but I done it nonetheless, and uh, luckily, I've been really decent with shooting rifles. Uh, focus and being mindful is one of the biggest things. And if you don't know how to really be mindful in your thoughts, and there's a part of your brain that produces thoughts and anxiety and stuff like that and it's just it's over it's hyper reactive in that moment and that's what causes things like that to happen being mindful and learning how to turn off that part of your brain is a big key successor in learning how to shoot anything or how to do anything with form related i went out and started shooting and i figured out whenever I'm left eye dominant, but I shoot right handed. So, my bow is not held in front of my right eye. 
it's held from my left. Therefore, for me to have full back tension, I cannot bring my arm all the way back like this because I'll throw myself out of line. I come back too far. For me, it's more of a right here rather than to be back here if I was if I was shooting out of my right eye. So I shoot with both eyes open, I shoot instinctive. And a lot of people think it's weird because my sight picture, which you would think the arrow would be under what I'm aiming at, but it's not because I'm left eye dominant, it's like this. I feel like it gives me an advantage because I can see the pitch of the arrow. Joel Patrick was talking about he shoots his on the other side of the bow and uses a thumb ring so that he can't. He talks about how he can see the pitch of the arrow whenever he's aiming. Now, I shoot instinctive, but I'm not fully aware of, I focus on what I want to hit. I don't, I don't think about where the arrow's at. But even in instinctive, your brain picks up your sight picture. That's what the muscle memory is. Your brain remembers what that sight picture looked like when you shot that last shot at that same spot, at that same distance. It remembers what that looks like. So if you turn off the lights and you cannot see your bow in front of you, you're probably not gonna hit what you're shooting at because of the sight picture, you cannot see it. Now you might be close being able to shoot instinctive, you might be close, but you're not gonna be able to shoot as good unless you can see your sight picture. I had a lot to work on with form. Whenever I would look at the target and pull back, the best thing for me was to not move my head. However, I realized I was bending my wrist and I was dropping my head down into the string. And what I mean by that is, let me hold the bow out here. Oh, I gotta scoot back. What I mean by that is, as I was coming back to be able to reach the bow into my face, I was tweaking my wrist like this so that I could get down in there. That's very bad. You want to keep a straight wrist. And on top of that, I was looking at the target like this, but whenever I would get back to here, I'd drop my head down like that, which caused me to bend my wrist down and dig my face into my, into my uh, anchor. You can move your head if you can be consistent with it, but more than likely, that's very hard to do. Um, so I had to learn to hold the bow out in front. Now, whenever I pull back, I don't move my head at all and my wrist stays straight. I completely, completely lost almost all of my plucking issues right there. I left most of my plucking issues in the dust. I hardly ever pluck the string anymore because of that. I have really good release. Uh, I have like, it fixed my form a lot. I don't, I have very good follow through. It's a lot more smooth. Uh, and it's a lot shorter of a movement too, which is a good thing whenever you're shooting instinctive. Because when you shoot instinctive, you're burning a hole through what you want to hit at with your eyes. And when you pull back, you do not want to move your head. If you move your head, chances are you're probably going to throw yourself off. So keeping your head in the same spot is a must. Where I'm left eye dominant, I was looking like this, but then whenever I pulled back, I'd move to try to put the arrow under my right eye, which was, I was screwing myself up. The next part is the target panic. And now we're going back to being mindful. Learning to be mindful and having a clear head, just a fully clear head, is one of the best things that you can do in anything. To achieve this, you can talk to yourself in your head as you're going through your shot process. Joel Patrick talks about that. He talks about talking yourself through your movements, but I could not do that. I tried. I tried, I'd step up there, be like, I'm gonna shoot this shot right with perfect form, blah, blah, blah. I'd pause, say that, and then pull back. And I'd be like, okay, go ahead and aim. I would get where I wanted to be, and then I would hit my back tension and all that. But it was too long of a process, and I could not, could not do it. So, 
I had to learn something different. I had to figure out something different that would get my mind clear. One thing I started telling myself, because people tell you to burn a hole through where you're looking at, but what if it's a blank canvas? What if it's just a white, just a blank white canvas? There's nothing there to stare at. Aim small, miss small. There's nothing there to look at. But in my head, I tell myself that there's always a dot. I had trouble focusing on dots on targets, especially if there was a small dot and then a bigger dot and then a bigger dot around that. I had very, like, very much trouble focusing on the center of that dot. So I started telling myself that there's always a dot. What happened when I done that is I started learning to make a spot where I want to hit at, no matter if there isn't a spot. You know, even on a deer, sometimes, most of the time, there's going to be a hair or something that you can pick out and look at. But if there isn't, you have to know how to make that in your head. You have to be able to do that without thinking about it. So whenever I get up to shoot, the first thing I think about is there's always a dot. And even now, even if I look at that small dot in the middle, I can pick out a spot in the middle of that dot, which is has helped my shooting a lot. Uh, now I can't shoot a whole like I can't shoot very good because I'm still going through the process of fixing everything I haven't fixed it a hundred percent yet uh, so I haven't really been training myself to shoot but I hear soon I'm getting ready to because I've got this bow switched over I just put the quiver on this thing so I've got to get arrows tuned to it and everything there's still three and a half months until deer season starts so I've got plenty of time. One problem I always had with the target panic is whenever I would pull back and come to full draw, I would just stop. I could not move this arm anymore. This arm would not move. I could not, even though I knew that I wasn't on target, I wasn't exactly where I wanted to be. I could not move the boat. I just couldn't. My arm would not move. So I had to start instead of starting and then pulling back starting where i and holding the bow up where i want to hit and then then pulling back because that after i pulled back there was no moving my arm i could not i don't know why but i could not move my arm so what i started to do is when you're sitting in a tree stand or whatever you're not going to be holding the bow the whole time like this as that deer is coming in because your arm's going to get tired and when you go to make that shot you're not going to be able to hold that bow up so one thing that i like to do is i take the bow and i hold it down like this like i'm watching a deer or whatever come in and then i focus on what i want to hit at then I bring the bow up at the same time and then I can move to where I need to be. But uh, that's just a little short video that I wanted to do uh, to, you know, hopefully help anybody else that's struggling with shooting instinctive. Uh, just remember, be mindful, focus on form. If you need to reset, reset. Just reteach yourself completely. Make sure you keep a straight wrist, back tensions in check. Don't drop your head when you pull back. Try to keep it straight and keep it the same as when you pulled the bow back. Just tell yourself something in your head that keeps you focused on uh, what you're doing. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you would, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. I hate asking for it, but a lot of people watch and they don't subscribe. And I'll have plenty more content like this to come. We start getting enough subscribers. Once I hit a thousand, I really want to start doing you know a lot more videos you know keep them out through summer spring and deer season so thank you so much for watching and uh yeah y'all stay tuned for the next one and always keep feeling the spirit